my mic's turned off. What's going on, everybody? Sorry about all the technical difficulties. Uh, I had some problems figuring out with this Mac. It just wasn't working well. And as you can see, I forgot to turn the mic back on, so I'm a little, little flustered at the moment. But we're good to go now. Let me know if any of the audio sounds bad or anything like that. It should be good to go. But as these things can uh, go, you know how it can just be, you know, challenging to know that things aren't working right. But anyway, I'm glad it's Friday. I'm glad we're able to do another show for everybody. Uh, this evening, we have Jimmy Lewis on with me. He is my co-host. As you know, I am. my name is Ben, the Lawn Guardian. Um, this show is very relaxed, very uh, low-key. We're just here to talk about lawn care as a DIYer. We are not a Matt Martin or a uh, Alan Hain or John Perry. We are just the guys that you see working on their lawn on the weekends and probably in the weeks from time to time trying to make our lawns look the best they can. So if you have any questions or comments or topics you want us to talk about, leave those down in the description or in the, the description, the chat, and we'll try to get to those. Uh, and uh, we we want to include you guys include you guys into into our conversation and all those types of things. But uh, anyway, I'm excited to have just another show for everybody. Um, and Jimmy, go ahead and introduce yourself. What's going on, man? Yeah, hey, I'm I'm really excited to be here. This is this is really fun. I enjoyed watching your inaugural episode last week and uh, participating in the chat there. Um, and now here I am. I've already upgraded. So this is kind of this is kind of cool. Well, I'm I'm glad to have um, you on the show. Um, it's it's good just to have other people and 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 from the audience, just so you guys know, this is none of this is scripted. We're just kind of going off off from the shooting from the hip, really, uh, talking about things that that I think most of you guys would probably enjoy just as a DIYer and those types of things. Um, so that's really it. I mean, it's it's going to be a relaxed evening. I hope you guys had a good week. It's been an interesting week. It's just a weird time of year, a weird year altogether. Um, and I hope this is just a break from all of those types of things because it's a break from all those things for me to just talk about grass and things that aren't all of those things that we know are going on right now. So um yeah jimmy i know i saw on your instagram today you did your last mow of the season yeah um speaking of ways to just get away from everything that's going on right now um i am very fortunate to work for a really awesome company and every week in thanksgiving they're doing something to give back and they started off the first week of Thanksgiving by giving back to all the employees at the company. We all got today off. And I think it couldn't have come at a better time. And I spent the day outside. I, Like you said, I got my last mow in um, for the season. I ran all the gas out of all my machines, got them ready to go to sit through winter, cleaned everything up, got, got some things marked off the to-do list that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, things I wish I would have done during the season because now I have to wait until next season to actually enjoy the things that I did. Um, but yeah, really nice to, to just be out in the lawn today to get things done. Um, even though it was kind of bittersweet because it was the last time really to be doing anything with the lawn, but it, it was very therapeutic for me to be out there. I was much needed. Yeah, I did. I, I haven't, it's been a week since I've mowed my lawn. I know I have uh, just a few more to go. I don't know if the this next one's going to be the last, but uh, I do. I do. I know the there's only maybe one or two left, uh, and that's it for me. I've the latest I've ever mowed is probably Thanksgiving, and that's about it. That's pretty late for some people with cool season lawns, because I know you know up north, and probably definitely for you. Thanksgiving is like you're shut down for the most part. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we're expecting snow this weekend. Oh, wow. Um, I, I shut my sprinklers off, uh, blew out my sprinkler lines two weeks ago, maybe almost three weeks ago now. So yeah, it's, 
we're there. Uh, we're 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 done. <laughs> um, yeah, this season's about over. I'm kind of trying to figure out what I want to do during the off season to stay busy and um, planning planning some fun things for next year already. It's looking like next year's going to be really fun. A lot of a lot of fun things going on. Really can't wait for it to get started, honestly. But at the same time, having the off season with a cool season lawn is is nice for a little bit. Yeah, I'd say uh, usually like around this time, I'm kind of just ready to call it and just kind of, you know, have a month off or so. But winter lasts much longer than a month. And then, you know, we yeah. have that time off and we're ready to get back out there because um, I know like we, I had my sprinklers blown out. I don't know. It was probably a week, week and a half ago because we were. It was just the the most. I didn't do it myself. I had somebody come out and do it. It was the guy that did our back full preventer test, and you know, it was just the only time he could come out. So I was like, sure, you know, go ahead. And, and at that time, the forecast looked like it was going to be pretty cold anyway, so it didn't really matter. So um, at this, I know I have like I I want to fertilize at least one more time because it just need it just yeah. needs it. But I I'm gonna have to do it with a hose end sprayer versus doing a backpack because I don't have anything to water it in. Uh, and that's just one of the things I've noticed with the bigger lawn that I have now versus the um, four to 5,000 square foot lawn I had in the old house. Um, this one is not really realistic to water in with a, you know, manual sprinkler, if you would. So, sure. <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to jump over to the chat, see who's all in here. I appreciate, again, everybody jumping in. Super AT or TA. I don't know why I always want to call you AT. Super TA, thank you for joining once again. Lake House Lawn Care, once again in here. Brett, you are you were in here last week. Thank you for coming in. Backyard all day. I don't think you were in last week, or at least you weren't in the chat, but thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Pierce, Pierce, thank you for coming in. Um, I'm going to butcher some of these names, uh, Mauro Marcilio, Marcillo. I think I got that right. Thank you for joining us. Grace Ortiz, you are, you are always a commenter. You are in everyone's videos and I appreciate all the support you guys give everyone in the lawn care community. You're awesome. Danny Lawn and Maintenance. Thank you for joining us tonight. Brett's Grascapades down in Florida now, no longer in Utah. Um, He's a, yeah, Florida man. a Florida man now. Thanks again for joining us tonight. Meister of my lawn. Thank you. Uh, I know I saw it. There you go, George. There you are. Princess cut lawn care. Thanks for joining in, bud. And uh, I appreciate everybody's patience and jumping in on this. Cause I had the end. I had to end the other one. I don't know. I'm not used to this whole live streaming thing. I'm just kind of figuring it out as we go. So I, you know, I, there's some bumps and things that I may run into that I didn't anticipate, but I appreciate everybody's, uh, patience. Uh, Justin, I hope you're, uh, you know, saving some lives tonight. What are you doing on the live stream? You're supposed to be putting fires out and all those kind of things. Alex. That or cooking dinner. What's, what'd you say? I said that or That's cooking right. dinner. Alex, thanks for joining <laughs> in tonight. Uh, it seems half of the audience are YouTube fellows. Yeah, there's quite a few, few YouTube people <laughs> in the chat. David Hall, thanks for coming in. Out of uh, North Carolina, who's your blue? I didn't see you last week, so thank you. Look, looks like there's a lot of new faces. If I didn't mention you, I do apologize. I'm trying to skim through the chat as best I can to catch everybody. But I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. It's going to be a good little show. Like I said, it's pretty relaxing, not supposed to be, you know, it's, it's just supposed to be a casual thing. Imagine we're sitting out by a campfire just having a drink and talking about our hobby of lawn care. So, um, like I said at the beginning, if there is any comments or if there's any questions or topics you guys want us to talk about, just throw those in the chat and we'll jump over and uh, try to answer those the best we can. Again, we're no professionals. We are just DIYers that try to learn from the professionals like Alan and Matt and John Perry and I guess Ryan. I don't know. Is, if, is Ryan? Ryan's not considered a professional, but he has a ton <laughs> of info. He knows his stuff for sure. Um, yeah. So one one thing that I that I admire about what Ryan does is and it's something that I try to do as well as I think Ryan spends a lot of time following um, professionals in the industry that work either at golf courses mm -hmm. or 
um, other sporting venues and things like that. Um, he reads a lot of, uh, what's the, what's the word college literature, research. um, studies on research papers and things like that. Yeah. He's, he digs deep. Um, I follow a lot of, uh, greenskeepers and, uh, groundskeepers, uh, on social media and see what they're doing. And there's, there's a lot to learn from, from what they do. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to actually I've... live next to a across the street. I have a, a greenskeeper by uh, that. I, it's a par three private course. I don't. I can't go play there, but um, I've gotten to know him a bit, and he's just through conversations. He can tell I know, you know, to an extent more than the average homeowner, and he's like, "You should consider joining the, you know." a career in turf management. I'm like, uh, I don't know if that's really the career field for me. This is really just a hobby. I'm, I don't have the knowledge base that yeah. a lot of people yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. What you don't realize you don't know. Yes. And then you start talking to somebody that is in the industry, uh, that, you know, does it every day and their experience level is just, through yeah. the roof and you realize like you know nothing <laughs> yep yeah i mean that's just the way yeah. it is with like when i when i tune into matt's live stream it's it's almost like i'm like dude i don't i don't know what you're talking about you're mentioning like chemical names that i've never heard all i know are brand names can you name those can i think that's really like as far as a DIYer. People are looking for brand names like, okay, tell me what brand name and then the name of that product. Because that's what, like, for instance, my brother mm -hmm. has mentioned to me. He's like, hey, uh, I have this weed in my lawn, but what, you know, what can I take use to take care of it? And, you know, he doesn't know. I know some of the chemical names, but he doesn't know, like, the extent of it uh, like I do as far as some of the chemical names. So he's just asking, like, what's the brand and what's the name of that brand's product at the, you know, big box store. And I think that's what a lot of home homeowners are really looking for. That's why I think like sometimes Matt's live yeah. streams just go over a lot of people's heads. Cause they don't, he mentions like the specific active ingredient that people need to use. And most people don't know what that is or where to look yeah. for that. Yeah. The nice thing is though, we have Google and Google can tell us a lot and give us a good start on finding that too. Uh, that's one thing I like about Alan's videos. Alan will show you the, the product and he'll say, make sure you just look for this active ingredient on the label. And that's something that I've appreciated. And the more, the more you listen to it and the more you hear it, you know, repetition helps. Yeah. And over time you just commit that to memory and it becomes a little yeah. easier. So this is something I don't really know about you, Jimmy, but um, how did you get, how did you dive into lawn, lawn care? Like what, what, uh, when did you know, like, this is something like, yeah, I'm going to obsess over this. <laughs> um, it's kind of a funny story, actually, because when, when this all started, I could not care less about grass. Like I didn't have any interest at all. Um, we moved into this house in 2014, uh, just gotten married f months before moving this house. Uh, my wife's family is from the area and, and she wanted to be close to them. And, uh, we ended up in this house and, uh, been here ever since. But when we first moved here, it was new construction and it was just dirt. Um, I posted, uh, a little bit of a before and after like the, how it started versus how it's going, um, on my social media. Oh, probably a month ago or so. Um, and like I said, when we moved in, my, my wife was very, um, insistent, insistent. She insisted on getting the grass done mm -hmm. soon. Um, that was like one of the first priorities and I didn't care. <laughs> um, and I had no idea what I was doing. Like I had, I had no experience with grass other than mowing the lawn growing up, you know, like 
I saw dad mowing the lawn and I saw the older kid across the street mowing the lawn and I thought he was cool. So I thought, Oh, I need to mow the lawn because then I'll be cool. Like he is. Uh, but yeah, we, I had, had no experience, didn't know where to even start. Luckily my father-in-law lives just down the street and he knew of the local seed distributor here and he got me some good seed, um, which is still what's out there today. And, um, we, the one thing I regret, you know, looking back, obviously hindsight's 2020, um, we didn't do any topsoil. It was just seed on clay covered with a little bit of compost Mm -hmm. and, you know, hope for the best. Uh, but yeah, so we, we put, put the seed down, covered it, fertilized it. I couldn't even tell you what we fertilized it with. Um, and my father-in-law said, just water it and it will grow. And we got lucky. Honestly, we got lucky. Uh, and then from there I had, I had no idea what to do. i I knew I had grass. I knew I had to cut it. I knew I had to fertilize it, but I didn't know when. I didn't know how, um, how often. And uh, yeah, so I got on YouTube, uh, found Alan's channel, like a lot of people have, and started watching his videos. And that was back during the uh, church project in Indiana and saw what he did there. And yeah, it just kind of blew me away, like how fast he got results and, you know, what a quick turnaround that was. And so I started following that and uh, started seeing a little bit of results. Then I got into that first summer and my lawn just looked like it was dying. And I thought, what is going on? I'm doing everything this guy's doing. What's happening. And uh, I thought I was going to lose the lawn and I I'll have to do a, like a, a lawn history video or something and just kind of show what that looked like. But around that time, Alan started actually doing coaching. I don't know if you remember that um, when he was doing coaching. Uh, I actually took him up on that and he coached me for about a month, I think, a month or two, maybe two months. Um, holy cow, did I learn a lot through that experience. Um, he saved my lawn. Now I was not watering near enough as I needed to. Yeah. Uh, and, and from there on, I was kind of off to the races. Um, I had no intention of starting a YouTube channel. Uh, I, I was taking pictures to start and I was kind of bored of the pictures. I didn't really get much out of taking pictures. And then I decided that I would start making videos just as kind of a way to document my progress, to have somewhere to go back and look and see how things were, were going and progressing. And then people started watching for some reason. And yeah, now here we are. (laughs) Well, I think, I think people started watching because, um, I mean, I can't, I, I think it's just like everybody gets started, starts to get connected with one another in some form or fashion and they start sharing everybody's stuff. And, and in reality, I mean, I think everybody, every lawn care YouTube channel, at least the DIY aspect, has a lot to owe to Alan because, you know, he's sure. helped so many people as far as, you know, promoting their stuff or, you know, I don't know. I don't, Cause like I, I found him just like you found him. And I think I've heard uh, there isn't somebody that has a small YouTube channel that I haven't heard that like, oh, well, I saw Alan and I got inspired and I started a YouTube channel from him. Like, I have not heard a story that didn't start from Alan, at least from a DIY perspective. Professional yeah. is a completely different perspective altogether, but um Yeah. It seems like the the DIY lawn care genealogy can always be traced back to Alan. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I want to give a quick shout out to uh Chips <laughs> and Guac. Thank you so much for that donation amazing thank you so much uh, i very much appreciate that that's not why i do this but i i do appreciate that support that kind of support um from the community and and everybody else so thank you for uh for that gift uh if you guys don't know who chips and guac is please go check out his youtube channel he's got a i think he's down in, i don't i think he's in atlanta i know he's in i think he might be in georgia but Regardless, I know he has a a good looking Bermuda lawn. He's a DIYer. He takes good care of it, um, and he makes it look really good without doing 
you know, going over the top with things. I think he rotary mows and it looks fantastic. So go check out his YouTube channel. Um, I appreciate so much for his support. So just wanted to give him a quick shout out. Um, Jimmy, you mentioned that when your story about starting lawn care, uh, <clears throat> just not knowing where to start, it doesn't sound like, did you not do lawn care stuff as a kid? All I did was mow. Okay. Did you enjoy it as a kid and or I, did you, was it was something you loathed over? Um, I enjoyed it because it was something new and it was kind of like the rite of passage. Like I'm big enough now I can push on more. And, and like I said, I saw that there is a, a family that lived across the street from us growing up and, and their son was about three or four years older than I. Um, he would always be out mowing them, and, and I saw that, and I looked up to him a little bit. Um, I I you remember the first time I was out mowing, he came and saw me, and was like, yeah, nice thumbs up, dude. And I thought that was kind of cool that he he caught that, and um, but it, it was just my dad would tell me, hey, we need to mow the lawn, and I would go mow the lawn. And, um, it wasn't anything that you know became a habit or a chore um but yeah it was it was good um i didn't enjoy it as much then as i do now that's for sure do you remember uh like was did you create a lot of memories was that something like you did with your dad like that that was just something like you guys did together or was it just kind of something you had to do um yeah it it's definitely a memory with my dad. Um, my dad and I did a lot of stuff growing up. You know, we played baseball and um, things like that. And now my parents actually live right around the corner from me, which is cool. So I get to spend a lot of time with my dad. Um, and, you know, we share tools and equipment now. And he actually has a shed. Everybody tells me I need to get a shed. My dad has the shed. <laughs> and so if I need to go stuff something in there, I'll go take it over and throw it in his shed <laughs> so when but. did you uh when did you decide that you wanted to go with real mowing i mean that's kind of a big a big jump i mean from a homeowner's pers perspective yeah. i mean i remember real mowing just this very tiny bermuda patch that i had and i know during its really vigorous growing season i had to be mowing that every day or every other day to really stay on top of it. So what yeah. made you decide that? Was it Connor, Brett, or was it somebody else? <laughs> it is completely Brett's fault. <laughs> um, <laughs> that guy sucks. man, <laughs> <laughs> And he knows it. Uh, yeah. I, I went up to Brett's house uh, last year and uh gave it a try and and thought it was kind of cool and um i i considered doing it in my front lawn and the thing about switching to to real mowing is you have to be very careful because it's a rabbit hole and you don't realize how good short grass feels until you actually have it you're you're keeping up on it and maintaining it um, people that don't have it just don't understand and what you get, you get to a point, you know, I, I, I did a whole series of videos taking my height of cut down in my front yard to get to where I am now. And every time I'd go lower, I thought, oh man, this is money. This just feels great. I'm going to keep it here. And then I get the itch to go lower and I'm like, oh yeah, this is even better. I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. And then you get to a point where you're actually real mowing and you start scalping because your, your soil isn't smooth. And you go, okay, I can't go any lower. <laughs> but yeah, and then into the sand. And it's like I said, it's a rabbit hole. Sure. So you gotta, you have to tread lightly when you decide you want to dabble with the real mower. Yeah, I could feel myself with that. Uh, if we didn't move, I was starting to feel it with that Bermuda. I told my wife, I was like, you know, if, if I wanted to transition our entire lawn to come to Bermuda, I would just start gradually plugging it every year on the main section um because it was like it, it was very addicting like when i got when i 
I think the lowest I got it, it was around an inch with that real mower I had. I don't think I could take it any lower. It might have been a little bit lower, but it was very, it was just a different cut. Like it's, when you start cutting grass that low, it, it you get a very tight cut because it starts growing differently. Yeah. Um, and it is, it's, it's literally like turf, like AstroTurf, only it's actual grass. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, <clears throat> way different than the long cut stuff. And I really like the... I, I like, I appreciate, like, really good-looking lawns that ha- are long, like Pete Denny's. Like, his is off the charts. Like, yeah. his it has to be, in my opinion, from videos that I see, some of the best long, long-cut, cool-season turf I've seen. Um, and his yeah. is kind of something I inspire to be for my lawn. Because I don't plan to take, I don't plan to go with real mowing anytime soon because I I don't have the time for that. Cause it's a big time commitment as you probably know. Um, yeah. Which kind of segues me. That's why I haven't done it in my backyard. Yeah. Cause you, if for your backyard, you'd probably realistically need something to ride on. Yeah. I mean, even now I need something to ride yeah. on. So we all know Brett was supposed to leave his errands at my house before he moved, but he forgot. Did he take it with him. Yeah, we'll take it with him. <laughs> Let's jump over into the chat and see if anybody does anybody have any questions. If not, no worries. Uh, let's just jump over there. <clears throat> Looks like there's some... I'll scroll around and see if I can find any questions for us I here. haven't seen any. The last, last week, there was quite a few more, but this year... You know, I did, I did see one come in early on. Let me go find that really quick. Yeah. Uh, actionvideo.net he said i seeded kbg into my bermuda september 19th i'm in north carolina i usually use bear advanced complete insect killer to kill off unwanted bugs and grubs can i spray this on new grass i would say um, check the label and make sure that there's no restrictions on new grass for that product otherwise i'd say go for it Usually uh, insecticides don't really do any harm to the lawn, in my experience. Yeah, and I'm seeding KBG in my book. Yeah, because I, I, that's what I would say, because I don't really know anything about, because uh, I would say at this time of year, for me, cool season lawns, you're really not spraying any insecticide on, but he has a Bermuda lawn, so he's probably in a warm climate, so he yeah. you know, may have some insect issues year-round. Um, so yeah, I would like Jim yeah. said, I would just say, read the label. Um, that's your best bet. Yeah. When in doubt, refer yeah. to the label. Yeah. Just read the label. Brandon Davis, Mr. B Davis wants to know when he's going to get royalties off the blade locker. Oh yeah. I did <laughs> see that question. <laughs> the answer to that is never. <laughs> and with that, we'll move on to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> Lake House Lawn Care wants to know about my Willy Wonka door behind me right here. Um, is it an attic? This that it? Yeah, it's it's a an attic space. This this room here is actually above the garage, uh, and the the ceiling is pitched, and you can get on both sides. You can get behind this wall, and I've actually put some plywood down in between the joists, um, and we have a little bit of storage in there. Jimmy, uh, Brandon from Bush League Lawns wants to know how high you cut your backyard. Uh, two and three quarters. That's rotary, right? Is where it's at right now. Yeah, Time Master. And then the front yard's at three quarters of an inch. <clears throat> yep. Well, if you guys, I mean, I would imagine if you're here, you know who Jimmy Lewis is. But if you're not familiar who Jimmy Lewis is, uh, go check his YouTube channel out. There is, uh, I put links to his YouTube channel and Instagram account in the description below. So go check him out. Give him some love. Subscribe, comment, like. I'm sorry, smash the like button. I think that's what you're supposed to say. That's what everybody seems (laughs) to say. Maybe it works for him. Who knows? I don't say it. Maybe that's why no one likes my videos. <laughs> I always feel like that's a running joke because people always say like, I'm going to unsubscribe to you if you say smash that like button or something like that. Uh, Jamie asks, 
Uh, if anybody's ever used the Magical alkaline soil, I have not. Um, no, uh, I haven't. And all the stuff I used this year to adjust uh, soil pH was elemental sulfur and citric acid. Don't ask me to prescribe you anything because I, I merely went off of everything I got from Matt Martin, to be completely honest. He's the one who helped me with that because my... For anybody who doesn't know, my soil pH uh, at the beginning of this year from my soil test was a 8.3, so that's super high. Um, I haven't yeah. done a soil test I, yet. I will probably do, I'm going to do one sometime over the off season, either winter or um, early spring before I put anything down, because I know you're supposed to wait like 40 or 45 days at a minimum from your last fertilizer application to get a good soil sample. So, um, yeah. Who, what, uh, what soil test are you going to use? Have you decided on that? Yet? I've been using, uh, it's, I can't remember the name of it. It's a, uh, it wasn't yard mastery. It was it just a, a local place. I know Ryan, Ryan Nor actually used his. It's, um, I can't, I can't remember what it is. Was it like a local college extension or? Yeah, I think it's something you know, like that, but I don't remember the exact name of it. But it's, I mean, it's uh, it's not as like user friendly as something like the My Soil or the Yard Mastery Soil Test is, um, because it doesn't tell yep. you what you need to do. It just says, "Hey, here's what you have," and it probably tells me more than I would ever need to know. But, um, that's just what I did. So I had as much information as possible going into this new lawn that I got. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm uh, I'm about due for another soil test. Uh, I think I'll do one uh, first thing next year. I think I'm going to go with the uh, spectrum analytics test this time. See what happens. Yeah, that's uh, that's the company that I used. I'm really I'm I'm eager. I, I need to go. I need to find that out what it is. Um, but it gives me basically the same thing that spectrum analytics was going to give me just on a different price point um that's probably what the deciding factor was for me um so backyard all day asked you why did you decide to go with jimmy lewis ever considered a name for your channel yeah that's a that's a good question uh, my wife's actually been um trying to convince me to to change my channel name to like lewis lawns or something like that um I keep it at Jimmy Lewis just because that leaves it open for all different kinds of possibilities for content. Sure. So I, I don't know if I necessarily want to keep the channel specific to lawn stuff. Um, but yeah, in the case that I want to do something that's not lawn care related, that, that kind of keeps it open. So yeah. Um, I have, I have to, uh, give chips and guac a little bit of time here uh he asked if the angels is my team because i always sport the angels hat so um to set the record straight uh yes the angels is my team the angels is my american league team um and the dodgers are my national league team so i am i should bring a dodgers hat right now and i, I do have one um but everybody knows me for the angels hat so i decide not to and the couple times that I have worn Dodgers hats in my videos, people have given me crap about it. <laughs> um, but they did win the World Series this year, which was super exciting. It's been a long time for them. And, and my family and I were super pumped about that. And yeah, so I, I was born in California. So Southern California teams I follow um, pretty, pretty consistently. And yeah, it was, it's been a good year for Southern California teams. I'll have to say I'm not a huge Dodgers fan. Being a Cardinals fan, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's okay. And, but I mean, realistically, I don't think a lot of people paid attention to sports this year, given the nature of mm -hmm. everything that's been going on. Yeah. And I, I know, like, yes, they won the World Series, and like every sport, I feel like was cut short as far as season, and I feel like everybody was yeah. kind of cheated really on a full season championship. So I'm like, 
And when yeah. people look back like, oh, I you agree. won in 2020, well, let's look back at that year and see what happened because yeah. you didn't play it. Every team that won a championship this year has an asterisk yeah, exactly. next to it. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I, I agree. Brett I said agree. you should change your channel name to Bandwagon Lawns. That's, that's... <laughs> Brett, can, Brett can get out of here. Can we kick Brett for like, can we put him in timeout for a few minutes? Do you have that power? <laughs> He I mean, I guess I could out. try to kick him out, but I'm not that kind of person. He's he's not breaking the rules right <laughs> now. He's um, Princess Lawn Cut or Princess Lawn Carry. Yeah, I figured you were a Cubs fan. I didn't know if you were a Cubs or a White Sox fan, but most people I meet from Chicago are Cubs. I think fans. if if you're in Chicago, I think the Cubs is the way to go. Which I don't really understand that, Salt. considering it took Salt. them like what 107, 108 years to win anything of value. Hey, that's okay. It just makes it all the more better. Remember when they, when they said that uh, the Cubs were going to be good for like several years in a row, and then they were going to win like <laughs> yeah. World Series after World Series, and then they didn't. I don't know. That's that's yeah. just what I remember. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, Mara Marcillo I don't know if I said that right I'm sorry if I didn't um, he wants to know if we've used any uh, Anderson's products specifically Doc's Anderson's products um, I think the only Anderson product that Doc is associated with is Super Juice which I haven't used um, but I do have some Anderson's products in the garage um, Brett can probably chime in in the chat there and tell him all about Anderson's products. Um, he probably has the most experience with it. I used PGF Complete as my starter fertilizer because that's all I had with uh, phosphorus in it when I did my backyard renovation in the spring. And uh, it worked fine. Um, I've got a lot of Humic DG in the garage right now that will be used next year. And I look forward to it. Yeah, I've not. I have but, not used any of the Anderson products. Doesn't he also? He promotes the uh, PGF PGF stuff, right? Uh, I don't know. I I full transparency. I don't watch Doc. Neither do I. So I mean, I've I, I've watched a few of his vid videos here and there, but uh, I thought he was the PGF complete and the uh, Super Juice guy, and then so. I yeah I that I couldn't tell that's you anything. about all I know <laughs> like I, I as far as like I think Jimmy had it right if you have any questions about it ask uh, Brett because he's probably used more of those products from the Andersons yeah. than me or Jimmy have and I don't I don't mean I don't know about anybody else in the chat but um yeah I'll tell you, one product that I that I got hooked on this year was the Pro Pete. And, uh, that, I man, that's good stuff. Um, I really, really liked using the pro Pete this year. And specifically I was, I was running the greens grade, uh, the 1704 greens grade, which was just so fun to use on the shortcut lawn. It just disappears beneath the canopy of the grass. It spreads like a dream and the results are really good too. I have not had a chance to use the Pro Pete yet. Um, I've only heard good things about it. Um, and I know you got a chance to tour their facility, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Their their facility is just up in southeastern Idaho, and it's about a four hour drive from where I am. And yeah, they invited me up to come check out check out headquarters and the warehouse, and um, that was a really really fun experience for me. I'd like to go back. Um, yeah, they, they're doing an incredible job. Uh, there's only about five guys behind the scenes there. So is that their only facility? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's made there. Um, yeah, they, they do it all. They do the greens grade, they do a fairway grade, and then they have what's called an oversized grade, which is what typically ends up in the homeowner products. Okay. Um, so it was kind of cool for yard mastery to be carrying a greens grade from them this year, which was really fun. Um, yeah, I hope to do more with them in the future. Um, we'll see what happens. 
but yeah, they're a great company. There's some really nice people uh, behind the scenes there. Um, Sunny Bermuda asks if, if Propeat's supposed to be at Home Depot. It is available online um, on Home Depot's website. I think you can get uh, the 1358 and one other product of theirs. Um, but yeah, it's it's only available online, and then uh, I think I think they handle the shipping. Will they so. ship anywhere, or just in the West region? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I'll have to check on Home Depot's website and see what the shipping availability is there. But I think I think they should be national. Don't quote me on okay. that. But yeah, they. I think a lot of their customer base is golf. They they supply golf courses, so. But it's cool to see them uh, taking interest in the DIY market and with homeowners and getting more involved in there. And I'd like to, to be more involved with helping them do that. So, yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's great. Uh, I thought that was really cool that, that you were able to take that tour and promote their company and, and their product that much more. I feel like you were probably one of the big DIY YouTubers that probably promoted their product a lot this year. And I think that's, um, that's really good for a small company like, or it, it appears to be a very small company. If you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I mean, yeah, no, they're a startup yeah. for sure. And that's great. I think that's awesome. Yeah, that was cool. If, if anybody that's watching hasn't seen that video yet, there's a video on my channel about that tour, um, at, at pro Pete. Uh, the only, the only downside to that, to that day was, um, they weren't making anything while I was there quiet <laughs> um not everybody was there and and it was just kind of like this is where this happens and this is where this happens so I still got to see where everything goes on it just wasn't in action nothing was nothing was really sure. turned on um princess cut wants to know if I've tried any other greens grade ferts um I think the only thing that I would that I have used that I would consider a greens in any way is the 818 the x cream carbon earth um i like that too i thought that was good i have I, i'm a fan go ahead no go ahead um i was gonna say i'm a fan of the um um what's it called the homogenized blended fertilizers um where everything's baked into this into the single prill so you you got your npk your micros your organics, everything's all in that one prill. It's not different prills for each thing, you know, different colors or different are, are different um, parts of the blend. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons that I really got this and it has peat moss as the base mm -hmm. as the organic material, which obviously is good for the soil and microbial activity and um, moisture retention. So that, and it made a huge difference. That and hydrotain I attribute to being able to survive the summer this year. That uh, you mentioned hydrotain. That's one thing I'm going to definitely need to use next year in my side lawn. I've noticed a lot of areas. I don't know if it's I'm not getting good coverage from some of my sprinklers or if it's uh, just some areas dry out more so than others just by nature. But uh, yeah. I do know I don't need to apply it to my entire lawn. It's just that side lawn, which is just, I think it's just under 4,000 square feet. So that's something that I'm going to need to be applying uh, next year. Cause I do, I did notice like even this summer as things were cooling off um, and we were already into fall and like here we had probably a week or two drought or not drought, but we just weren't getting rain, but it was still cool, but things were drying out and I could see some things were starting to, to kind of check out and i was telling me all right that's definitely going to need some hydrotain next summer uh when we're getting into it because i didn't really see that kind of stuff all that much this summer because i was dealing with a lot of fungus issues as yeah. many of you guys know so i couldn't tell a lot of those things i was just more focused on all right my lawn has a disease that i need to eradicate and I have a pH problem I need to address. And that was kind of my main focus. Cause I have had some people ask me like, Hey, what's your treatment plan for your lawn? I'm like, 
I have no regular treatment plan at this point because it's been really catered to what my soil test has been telling me. So, um, yeah. And I think that's, that's the treatment plan for anybody. At least that's what I think it should be. Yes. Get a soil test, figure out where your lawn is deficient and where it's over sufficient and make the adjustment and tailor a plan to yourself and go from there. That's, that's the one thing that I try to stress when one is different and there's lots of different variables. Um, of course, if there's ways to do it, if, you know, obviously the average person like coworkers that I talk to, they just want to mow the lawn once a week. They want it to look nice. And there's ways that you can do that. Mm. Um, but at the same time, like you need to know what your lawn needs. Um, once you understand that and you understand how to find products that fit that mold for you, then it just becomes much easier. For sure. And that's one thing that I would say for anybody that, uh, I don't think it's just about necessarily the quality of the lawn you want to have. Like, even if you want to just have a lawn that you mow a couple of times a week, I still think it's important to, um, know what your soil test is reading. So you're not wasting product or putting product down that you don't necessarily need. You're essentially being more, you know, I guess, environmental friendly of, of the things you need and you're not just wasting money or product. Yeah. I think, I think money, is the big one there um uh, yeah especially everybody that's you know still still throwing down malorganite like it's going out of style you know malorganite's gotten so expensive yeah. um it's just it's not worth it to me anymore um the lawn analyst says would you recommend getting a soil test at the end of the season this fall or at the beginning of this in the spring that's a good question I, I like that question. For me, it's it's early in the spring um, before um, I put anything down. Um, obviously, you can do a, a pre-emergent product, and that won't affect the results of a soil test. If it's only the pre-emergent that's that's in there, some there's some products out there that have the the pre-emergent and a fertilizer to it. Um, but before any fertilizer product goes down, I would do the soil test. Um, if you're going to do it in the fall, you probably want to wait about, oh, I'd say at least 30 days um, bef after your last application. That way, nothing's kind of hanging in there and it doesn't skew the results. But for me, I like to do it early in the spring, um, which is when I'll do my next one early next spring before I put anything down. That way I have the results before I get a plan together. So I can use the results to formulate a plan to see what changes I might need to make that I can use throughout the duration of that season. Um, I want to jump up to super TA. He said, it seems like a ten some tension when doc was mentioned. Um, I don't think there's any, I, I don't know of any tension super TA. So I, I don't, I don't think there is any, I just personally don't, there's not some YouTube channels I watch or I just don't, I either a, I don't watch or a, I don't know of. Um, I don't have any, I wouldn't say there's any tension, at least none that I know of. I'm just a small YouTuber and, and those types of things, so I can't really speak to that, um, especially when, you know, mentioning the Carbon X guys. I don't know, man. It's just uh, there's things in the professional aspect of things that as a DIYer that I don't think a lot of us know because there's just things that we're not really – we don't know just because we're not in that line of business, but – Anyway, just wanted to, I didn't want yeah. to, want you to think we skipped over that question. I just wanted to kind of address that real quick. Um and I and the lawn analyst, I would agree with exactly what Jimmy said. Um I think he that's spot on. Uh I don't I was going to get one. I was going to get a soil test in the fall, but I I'm deciding against it because I'm literally fertilizing almost every week, so I would have to wait a good amount of time. You know, I know from what I've heard, the minimum is 45 days uh, after your last fertilizer application to collect a soil sample. So those fertilizer applications don't distort your uh, your soil test result. That's why I think it's it's generally a good idea to to do one at the beginning of spring before you ever apply anything to the lawn. Because, I mean, you can yeah. still like even if you do that, 
you can still make a fertilizer application because there's general fert apps you can make that you're like, all right, I know my lawn's going to need nitrogen and potassium. Like there's there's nothing going, you're not going to yeah. go wrong with a fertilizer that doesn't have phosphorus in it. Um, and then when you get your fertilizer or your soil test back, you can go, you can look at them like, all right, well, the remainder of the year, I need to really hone my applications on, you know, more macro or micronutrients and so on. Cause in general, you're not going to correct your soil test anyway, just in, over the course of a year or an application anyway. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not, you know, essential to have before yeah. your first fertilizer application. It doesn't hurt to have it, but um, anyway, I wanted to mention, I did put Jimmy's yeah. uh, before we go, move on. I wanted to, I put Jimmy's, a uh, link to Jimmy's Pro Pete tour video uh, in the chat. So if you guys want to go check it out, um, that links. In... Don't do it now though. Do it after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay don't here. leave the <laughs> don't leave the live stream. Uh, check it out later. But I just wanted to give you guys the link so you had it. It's a really cool video um, of just kind of seeing the inside works of a small company like theirs uh, and making fertilizer. So go check that out when you guys have a minute um jimmy yeah. i wanted to ask you guys ask you a question that i think pertains to a lot of diyers that have kids um what is it yeah. like for you to maintain the lawn that you have at a very high level i, I say high level for most homeowners having you have three kids i believe um yeah you know three kids a full-time job you're married you know what's that work-life balance like it's busy. <laughs> it's really busy. Um, yeah, it, and especially with, with a YouTube channel on top of all of that, it, it gets really busy. Um, the nice thing is, is usually when outside, um, the kids are out there too. And, and sometimes my wife will be out there too. Um, we like being outside, which is, which is good. Um, the kids like being around me when I'm, when I'm mowing the lawn, that's why they show up in the videos a lot. Um, just because they like being out there and they're going to get caught on camera and they're going to end up in a video. So, um, I like to try and find like, there's, there's times where I'll find video of my kids, you know, that my cameras have picked up when I wasn't looking, you know, and, and, and it's just like really cool moments that I would have never seen otherwise. Um, which has been really fun in that aspect. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was the video I did last with uh, the frozen grass seed uh, experiment. Uh, I had a GoPro attached to my hat uh, because I was carrying the pots to my backyard out of my garage. And uh, my middle my middle child, uh, Henry, he's three. Uh, he he uh, was in the garage, uh, which was lucky because I needed help opening the gate to the backyard. And I said, Hey, will you open the gate for me? And I don't even think he knew I was filming. Um, but he had his little, uh, strider bike and he just kind of zoomed by me and it was just perfect timing. And he hopped off that bike, climbed up the fence and unlatched the gate for me. And that was just super cool to have that on video. Yeah. I saw that when I, I had to kind of do a double take cause it, he like totally spider man up that, uh, Fence oh yeah he's got that down that was really <laughs> cool i thought because i couldn't tell i was like did he like grab onto a handle i was like no man that kid just like wrapped himself around the fence post and kicked the door open it was really cool <laughs> i remember i because yeah. i saw your uh your instagram post of that clip and then i went and watched your video uh you do a great <laughs> a great job of that by the way of like having a specific clip of your videos that you put on Instagram that make people want to go watch the actual video. That's a great job. You got, you do a good job of that. Cool. <laughs> I'm I'm glad to hear that's working. Yeah. <laughs> what does your wife think of all of like the, the lawn care stuff and you doing the YouTube thing? Like, is it, is it like an annoyance? Is it, I don't know. Like, does she take interest in it? There's, or? Yeah, she's she's always been very supportive of it, um, which is really cool, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, but yeah, like full honesty, like there's been times where where it's been the opposite, you know, or it's it's caused a little a little contention, which is fine too. But 
overall, like she's been very supportive and, and I couldn't be more, more thankful for that. Uh, I don't, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I, I think she's a lot more optimistic, uh, about it than I am, but I never saw my channel getting as far as it has ever, like not even in a million years. Uh, and she, she always sees further than that, which is so nice to have that, that optimism from her. Uh, I, I never saw myself ever hitting a hundred subscribers and she says, Oh, you'll have, this was the first, first year I did, did my channel. She, she said, Oh, you'll have 500 by the end of the, the end of the year. No problem. And not only did I have 500, I had, I had over a thousand at that time. And she, she saw that she saw that potential and, and that was really cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, I think it's, I I would say the same thing with my wife. She's been, uh, very encouraging and, uh, she sees a lot of the creativity just kind of, you know, flowing and she enjoys just seeing, yeah. that, uh, I don't know. It, it's kind of a different aspect of myself that I've tapped into that I didn't really know I had. Um, and I've really enjoyed it and kind of taken it and run with it and seeing what I can do with it. And, uh, I mean, heck I never, I, I really, I mean, same with you. I didn't think that that it would ever become something. Of course, I wished it would just to see, I mean, and not to say it really has come of something. I wouldn't say a 4,000 subscriber YouTube channel is something, but when you start out small and you get like a hundred subscribers, it's like, wow, that's kind of neat. And then you just build on that and build on that. And, yeah. that. and that's what I continue to see in our, our community. I see a lot of small, smaller YouTube uh, channels. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm like an enormous channel by any means, but I see that and I'm like, that's, you know, and I, they're encouraged by that hundred subscriber. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, don't be discouraged from that. And, the, and from, because you're not gaining like thousands of subscribers at a time. Like it's all about taking those small yeah. steps. And that's, that's the one thing that I've been really encouraged by too, is there's some really nice people out there. Uh, and there's, there's some really great people within our space uh, as a lawn care group and community, there's some really, really good people out there. And, um, I, I get some really nice people in the comments of my videos regularly. And, and that's, that's been really encouraging and uplifting for me too. Um, yeah, I, I was going to bring up, uh, speaking of community, I was going to bring up, uh, uh, Rodney Smith Jr. I don't know if, if you're still following him at all, or if you've been in touch with him, Lee. Um, but, um, for those, for those that don't know, uh, Rodney Smith Jr. You can follow him on Instagram and Twitter. And I don't know if he's on Facebook or not, but he, he's the guy behind the raising men lawn care service. And he encourages kids to do his 50 yard challenge program where they mow 50 yards for, um, elderly people, veterans, single moms, um, people like that disabled people, people that, that need help. And he, he has kids sign up for his program. And if they mow 50 yard, 50, 50 yards, then he'll drive to their house, uh, anywhere in the country and he'll give them new lawn care equipment as, as a way of congratulating them for completing that program, which is super cool. Um, I know that you've met him before. Um, I've met him before. Um, he's, I don't know if you've, you've noticed that he's, uh, struggling to be able to keep, um, keep himself here in the mm -hmm. States. Uh, but it sounds like he's getting a lot of support around that. Um, if, if any of you are not aware, go find him on, on Instagram and you can, you can learn more about his story and, and what he's going through right now. And you can maybe do anything, um, in your power to help him, um, stay here in the, in the U S. Um, he's doing some really good things in this in this world and he's a great example um he should be coming to utah again pretty soon he's got a he's got a kid out here that just finished the 50 yard challenge so i've i've been in touch with him i'm gonna try and meet up with him and, and get another video with him and, and see if we can't talk more about that and in, in our space yeah so i have not uh i've i've 
loosely kept up with them on on social media. For uh, earlier on, I was in more communication via text and those types of things. Um, but yeah. life gets busy, and we just have not uh, kept in touch as much. But I did see, like Jimmy said, he. Um, Jimmy, you can correct me. My my vocabulary or language might be wrong, but he did lose. He was here on a visa for education, and that ran mm-hmm. up, and he applied for a green card and got denied. Um, so he is yeah. trying. He uh, is trying to stay in the states and wants to eventually become a citizen, and is just having a very difficult mm-hmm. time doing so. Um, and I'm gonna try to find the link to his. Uh, his Twitter account where he made that post to where um, you can, he, he asked, he's asking for letters to be sent to, to him um, for people to write. So then he can use those letters for um, basically purposes to gain um, access to a green card to stay in the country, to do uh, Mm -hmm. continue to do his mission here in the United States. Cause he has done an incredible job He's done, I don't know how many tours across the United States. Uh, nine. Nine tours across. And he's, and that's this, that's not just going All from. All 50 states. Yes, yeah. That's not just going from east to west. That's going to every individual state in the United States to mm-hmm. mow lawns for people in need. Um, so he yep. does an incredible job. Um, I had the opportunity to meet him when he was uh, in St. Louis. Uh, it was over two years ago now. Great guy, extremely down to earth. Um, he's from originally from Bermuda, I believe. Um, right. Yeah he he has he he's just an extremely down to earth guy, and his his mission has has not been lost. He knows exactly what he wants to do, and he's not he's not lost focus of that uh, um, mission of his. I can't find that exact tweet of his that he posted where you can send your uh, messages or letters but if you wouldn't mind uh i'll i'll see if i can get it on instagram and and share it there uh Um, but yeah he uh it's been really nice to see over the last couple years he's been getting a lot more attention um at least for his uh for raising men lawn care service for his foundation uh he was on on uh I've seen him on television. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the show. Uh, let's see. Uh, but he recently, I've seen he's got a deal with Lay's. Yes. Uh, he's on the Lay's potato chip yep. bags right now. Um, Ford just gave him a new I car. See that. Which is completely, be, he's completely beyond deserving of that. Um, I think is I think is. Ford Edge had like 320,000 miles on it. Um, Yeah, just, just crazy. Uh, But yeah, he's, like I said, he's been, he's been on uh, TV. He was on uh, BYU TV on a show that they have on there called, um, I think it's called Making Good. Okay. Yeah, it's called Making Good. Um, if you just Google search BYU TV making good Rodney Smith, you'll you'll be able to watch the episode on there. Um, and it was a really good episode. I I enjoyed watching it. Um, and then as far as his Instagram, I'm pulling that up right now. Um, but we can we can move on while I find yeah. that. That's fine. Um, well, well, let's see. <clears throat> Um, well, I was just going to ask, I have, uh, Jimmy, do you have any videos coming out soon to kind of plug? Cause we're going to, we're going to kind of wrap up the show here, uh, in a minute. And I, you know, just giving Jimmy an opportunity to plug any videos that he's got coming out, um, for any of you guys who enjoy here pretty soon. What do you got coming out for us, Jimmy? You know, I'm, I've actually gone through all the videos that I have filmed right now. Um, I, I don't have anything in the pipeline, which is kind of funny because I've been putting out two videos a week all season. Uh, so it's, it's kind of nice to have a break. Um, I thought about filming today while I was out doing stuff, but I decided to just kind of keep to myself. 
which is good. There, it's it's nice to mow and do things without a camera. Yes. Um, and anybody that has a YouTube channel that's putting out consistent content knows that. But I do have a couple of things planned. Um, I've got some products in the garage right now that are still in the box. And I've got a couple of products on the way. Uh, so I've got some winter content coming. Those of you that watch my channel can probably guess what that might be about. Um, but yeah, there is some winter content coming. Um, I'm going to be hopefully traveling in January and there will be some content around that. I want to kind of keep that uh, under wraps um, because it's already not happened two or three times this year just because of the virus and things like that. And so, yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll wait to share that when it actually happens. <laughs> I got you. But it's, it's been, it's been over a year in the making. You might know what that is, but, um, it's, it's been over a year I have a guess. trying to get this to happen. Yeah. So, well, I have a video that will be coming out tomorrow. I don't know. I haven't scheduled it yet. It'll be either at noon or one o'clock central standard time. Um, with Bush League Lawns, he's a local lawn care nut here in the St. Louis area. Uh, he came over and we had some fun out in the lawn. So nice. uh, that will be that video will be dropping tomorrow. So do stay tuned for that. Danny Lawn and Maintenance, my favorite YouTuber. You know that's a trick question because I don't know if you're talking about lawn care or just general YouTube. <laughs> I am a big fan of Casey Neistat. Um, I love his I love his editing. I love his style um lawn care youtubers um I, and as far as like newer smaller youtubers and i and this is you know people have all different classifications of this the lawn tools i think they've pushed the diy youtubing sector to just a different spectrum because they they have original content out all the time and i really love that um, they have funny videos. They have serious educational videos. Um, they're just good all around stuff. And uh, not to mention, Jimmy Lewis also has really good stuff that he puts out as well. Um, but I, 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 I don't know. I, it's hard to pick a favorite one because I feel like a lot of people put out good stuff. I feel like people are starting to get more creative. They're starting to break away from just copying one another. Um, I don't know. I just, there's not really, I follow a lot of people. Millennial Farmers, another YouTuber I like a lot. Um, Jimmy, do you have any, who's your favorite YouTuber, Jimmy? Oh gosh. I don't know if I have a favorite. I, I have a very diverse yeah. um, subscription list. Um, but yeah, I, I do watch the Millennial Farmer. I usually watch the Millennial Farmer with my, with my boys at night while I'm, trying to get them to go to bed <laughs> um i'll lay down with them in their bed and i'll watch millennial farmer <laughs> while they're going to sleep um and they like watching it too they usually fall asleep to him which is not to say that his channel content is boring they're just tired <laughs> um but yeah i watch millennial farmer um i've gotten into cletus mcfarland ever since alan started working at the freedom factory um that's been cool uh I'm trying to look at my list here. That's like not lawn related. Cause I think a lot of people watching this stream probably watch sure. what we watch and who we watch. Um, fried eggs golf. It's a great channel. Oh, yeah. I always um, forget about him. <laughs> yeah. Randy from fried eggs golf and Scoop yes. Steve. Uh, anybody that doesn't know fried eggs golf, go check them out. They just put up an amazing yes. video the other day. It was hilarious. Um, <laughs> it was so funny. I, I wish that he had more time to make more content. His content isn't very consistent, but um, his kids just got into golf. And so he's going um, to take them to golf tournaments and practices and stuff, which is totally respectable. Um, but gosh, their content is hilarious. Uh, father and son, they, they build a, a nine hole golf course. It's a single green, but nine tee boxes around the pond on his dad's property. It's called Beverly Hills Golf Course. It's amazing. Um, I like Fried Eggs Golf. Uh, I like What's Inside. Um, uh, they are from Utah as well, uh, so it's kind of cool to see that. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of similarities there. Um, 
I watch uh, Marquez Brownlee for my tech stuff. Uh, Michael Russo just dropped a good one. Coach Kent Murphy, if you guys are down with some funny baseball coaching videos, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look that one up. I'll have to look that one up. But yeah, that's that's what what keeps my attention lately are, are those channels. I I do watch Casey Neistat. I get a lot of a lot of uh video ideas from from Casey. Um a lot of a lot of in, uh videography inspiration um and co- uh, not so much content ideas but just creative ideas. Um he he is a legend. He's he's very good at at making videos. Yep. So, yeah, that's that's what I watch. That's what I like. Um, yeah. Well, uh, I think that's going to wrap up the show tonight. Jimmy, I really appreciate you uh, you coming on tonight and joining us. Um, if anybody on the chat wants to come in on the show, just let me know. Uh, you know, shoot me an email at thelawnguardian.com or not lawnguardian.com lawnguarding at gmail.com uh again jimmy i really appreciate the time you spent with us tonight just to kind of talk talk shop about lawn care and you know have a good time so um yeah this was a lot of fun thank you for inviting me to come on the show and i hope we can do it again yeah absolutely uh next week uh we will be back with justin justin's gonna be back on the show him and i are kind of the the normal people you'll see on the show and you know, since he is a firefighter out saving people's lives uh, every week, just uh, on an irregular schedule. If you don't know what firefighter schedules are, they're just, uh, it's not a regular work schedule. So he's not able to be on every week. So yeah. we will be back on with Justin next week at uh, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Friday. And uh, again, we'll just be back at it again. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that fun jazz. Share my channel with all your friends. Go check out Jimmy Lewis. Go check out his Instagram, Twitter account, uh, and all that fun stuff. He's on social media. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. We had a great time. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope this was a great time to just relax and enjoy uh, the beginning of your weekend. Have a good one, guys. We'll see. Yeah. You. We'll see you later. See ya.